uh, field research program in, uh, in Australia doing an evaluation of a colleague's uh, university IT organization in Queensland, Brisbane. And uh, I, we were going to go down to Sydney because Pearson Education was hosting a roundtable on innovation and new opportunities. And uh, as we were flying in, I got a text message uh, from Ann Keane. Uh, Lev, I'm flying into Sydney tonight. Uh, do you want to have dinner? So this is my reciprocation. Anne actually lives in Denver. It's not quite as exotic, but she literally flew in for about 36 hours to Sydney. So I'm figuring like 24 into Cleveland's not bad as an alternative. Anne, as I say, has a distinguished uh, business career in the higher education space. Uh, her detailed bio is outlined for you today. She's actually got an extraordinarily exciting opportunity, really driving business development with the world's one of the world's not only the largest, but perhaps most important uh, publishers. Uh, she was brought on board to actually help the convergence of an acquisition that Pearson made of eCollege, which is a player in the LMS space, but her real role is working on really developing the business planning and the business development strategies for taking all the assets that are in the Pearson family and figuring out how to bring them creatively, innovatively, and in repurposable form to the education community and today she's going to spend a little bit of time talking uh, chatting with us um, about uh, so that business perspective and will you please join me in welcoming Anne Keane. Thank you. Thank you. It truly is a collaborative world isn't it? <laughs> I happen to be um, I have global responsibility for Pearson um, for the um, the learning technology part of it and so I happen to be visiting our office in um, I mean, just go up a bit here. Whoops. In in Sydney, and it was one of these. Over the top. Got to put my glasses on. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. I know. No comments there. Um, let me just do this for a second. Uh, actually, I was visiting Sydney, <laughs> and um, I just happened to uh, talk to one of the folks in our offices, who um, heads of the Pearson um, Australia, the president of Pearson Australia, and he said, "Oh, by the way, I took your suggestion that um, uh, Phil Long, who was the now new visiting um, professor of um, technology and innovation." formerly with the MIT, I think he's still with MIT, now he has the opportunity to build from the ground floor up a, a Center for Innovation and Learning at the University of Queensland. So they were bringing him in for an advisory board meeting and, and um, I said, oh, he's a good friend of mine, I know him very well, I know Lev, oh, by, and he says, oh, by the way, Lev's here too, so <laughs> it was truly a collaboration. Um, as Lev mentioned, I have, um, I'm se seven months into joining Pearson and um, Pearson is large, who knows uh, Pearson as a publisher? Okay, who knows Pearson as a media giant? Okay, um, they own Financial Times, they own Penguin Books. Um, who knows Pearson as a education provider outside of textbooks? Okay, so few. Okay, so this I'm in a good job. So my, part of my role is to transform that. Um, but part of transforming an, a company um, is also, and why is this company transforming? It's transforming because the, the markets it serves, education, whether it's informal education or formal education is evolving. And so it's an, interest, it's an interesting time to be there. Um, and what I wanted to share with you are some of the things that we are seeing as a company um, in the field and some of the things that we're trying to do to help shape that and help bring solutions to some of the transformation um, that we're seeing. And um, one of the things I wanted to share with you um, is um, an example of transformation. All right, we've got a completely average semester ahead of us. I'm going to be lecturing constantly, and I expect all of you to stare back with blank expressions. Any questions? Should we prep for class? Oh, absolutely not. Make me be the only one who prepares for anything. Will we spark class discussions by asking questions? Doubtful. Will we be inspired? I'm expecting you to be bored and underprepared, so no. OK. Now let's talk uh, specific steps. How are we going to do this? I could memorize facts instead of understanding concepts. Oh, fantastic. I could focus on just passing. I'm going to hold you to that. I can pretend to take notes while really chatting on Facebook. Good use of technology. I won't get excited about my future. Oh, that's thinking long term. Excellent. It's 
called My Business Lab, and it was to actually develop to supplement a textbook. And so, as we're, this is part of the transformation that's going on, is, is there's been some, a lot of di rich uh, digital media assets um, built around a textbook. And what we're seeing is the inversion of the digital rich media assets being more important than the textbook, or the combination of the two. And then we're also seeing that with um, retooling courses and how can we really help address blended and multimodal learning. So one of the, the, the topics of the conversation today is how do we look at these new generation of learning styles. So to frame the conversation, um, top teaching and learning, oops, <clears throat> thank you, <clears throat> um, challenges, generational differences, new and emerging teaching, learning styles, new course models, blended and hybrid models, new um, technology uses, and some of the achievements today that we're seeing and how can Pearson bring some of these solutions to the market. So I thought it was interesting because 10 years ago I had the opportunity to be part of a very small company with a, a, a couple guys started um, that's now called, that was called Blackboard and I um, often said I was the second adult hired there and helped them with their uh, global expansion. And in being reflective, this was the vision 10 years ago. I used to cringe, talk about visual. Um, when we'd go around and we would talk about this um, little company called Blackboard and how it was going to take um, the the internet. It was going to embrace the internet and it was going to bring it to education and cha and change it in a way that um, nobody saw coming. And so um, I used to just cringe at the thought of these two sumo wrestlers. And when you think about it, ten you know in ten years, um, internet being the fastest growing market medium, strength for content, communication, and collaboration. And so it's interesting that today this conversation is about collaboration, and a large part. Communication and collaboration, as we know, this Web 2.0 world is really 10 years later just now exploding. And then what's, what's next is content, right? Because the, the other topic we have is, okay, now that we're collaborating, now we're looking at different um, pedagogies and styles, the content needs to change. And so with that, um, we have seen, and again, this is something that um, richness and reach, this was a part of a presentation I gave 10 years at the World Education um, Conference in Vancouver. And it was 10 years ago that we said that the internet and education was going to bring about um, new tradition, change the way traditional education is, is carried out. We're going to look at new models of education, new economic models, and it was going to affect the classroom, the libraries, museums. It was going to be full of rich multimedia and content, and yet 10 years later, we're just now getting here. And in a large part, you know, why is that? And it's because of this, right? Digital natives um, who spend more time playing video games and watching TV. Or, um, as we just found um, from a survey that was taken by um, Educause, is that what we're finding is these digital natives, but it's really all of us in our consumer lives and what we have at our t fingertips in our consumer lives that are really pushing on the teaching and learning challenges. So what we're I'd like to, I think it's important to, to look at this, and that is, you know, creating learning environments, promote active learning, critical thinking, collaborative learning, knowledge creation. That's part of, a large part of what we're talking about here at this conference. Um, we've all been talking about 21st century literacies, um, uh, re reaching and engaging today's learner of all ages. Um, we see this as a large challenge. Um, encouraging faculty adoption, innovation, and teaching and learning. We heard that today. How do you manage up? How do you get that out there? One of the things that, as I visit campuses and, and talk to chancellors and presidents and, and academic um, um, the leadership, is that faculty professional development is huge. We're at, being asked for it left and right. And, and Pearson has uh, tremendous capabilities in that area, from, from curriculum to, um, to instructional design to all sorts of consulting. But that, that truly is a, a large challenge in, in moving forward these, these technologies. And then advancing innovation and teaching and learning. One of the, um, the um, there was an article um, most recently um, in the Educause review um, called about learning spaces and Phil Long, who I mentioned earlier, and a colleague, um, put together this notion of what are some of the possible science codes of the revolution, the revolution of this learning. And so 
we know we're often seeing the, the, uh, the contrast to the industrial model to what's being called the inquiry model. And so I wanted to highlight a few of these, the learning model being from behaviorism to social constructivist, um, the role of the learner, passive receive knowledge to active constructive knowledge, uh, the role of the teacher, foreman, clerk, um, these are his terms, not mine. I know that's probably an unpopular way to describe a fac faculty member, but to a co-learner facilitator. And then um, for the uh, lit uh, literacy required, uh, decoding, defining, analyzing, translation, and critical. So in the spirit of um, being a visual learner, this truly is what we're looking at, the learning models, behaviorism to social constructives going from passive receiving knowledge to active constructive knowledge, foreman clerk to co-learner facilitator. Whoops. I'm, I apologize, I'm having trouble with my, um, my media uh, breeder. But one of the things that I'm, this is actually a, a 3D visual um, on visually enhanced learning. And I will skip through it here. The, the point of this is that what we're seeing is the need for visual learning, interactive learning, and um, part of the what we're looking at as a company is how do we take content um, and, and knowledge that we have gathered throughout the years with our, our authors and how do we recreate immersive learning labs or how do we create digital rich content and we, we're seeing an uptake um, throughout the country and advanced visualization centers for instance North Carolina Community College is throughout, throughout the state of North Carolina putting in advanced visualization centers and where they're putting in um, caves, um, 3D caves and they're creating um, they actually have, um, are creating 3D um, curriculum around how to create 3D immersive learning so that they can go out to the community, whether it be the military, the healthcare community, and look at how can we visually enhance the way we learn and we teach and we train. So we've been following this, um, and you know what has once been sort of science fiction has now become science fact, and it's becoming affordable. And so we're, we're looking at the challenges that this presents in an affordability in a way that you can help it uh, ch uh, change the pedagogy and how can we immerse it into the classroom. And one of the things we are working with is a manufacturer who has taken a projection system, a $17,000 projection system, and to be able to take 3D graphics and immerse it into a room and now all of a sudden you have Thomas Jefferson, a holographic image, talking about the Declaration of Independence. And so we're, we're looking at different types of um, technologies and how can we bring it to market to help enrich the curriculum and address the different learning styles. So it's, it's basically from watching and reading and listening to doing, stimulating, and engaging. So our mission is at, at, at Pearson is really to help transform education by providing um, innovative and effective products and services that demonstrably improve student performance and institutional um, productivity. So some of the strategic assumptions that we have made is that technology will transform education. That's certainly something we've been talking about for a long time. The textbook model is under pressure, and we know that by today's announcement. Educational improvement requires integrated solutions. Um, partnering. Um, customers will increase, increasingly demand proof of efficacy. And um, we have um, actually made a lot of acquisitions in the last couple of years um, for high states assessment, um, looking at companies that um, provide assessment, whether it's institutional assessment, um, formative assessment, or substantive assessment. And so how can we bring and match some of this to the curriculum, but also to the institution's goals? So operational excellence and outstanding um, reputation for reliability become far more important sources for competitive advantage. Um, we expect to see waves of new solutions, new competitors, new businesses, and certainly I think yesterday um, there was an announcement Blackboard bought Angel, so again, you know, we're starting to see um, some convergence, um, and um, I think a large part their, their um, explanation was that they were looking at new ways of innovating and providing, providing new solutions to the market. So I think we can continue to see this convergence of technologies and partners and, and with content and with um, services. 
the other thing we're looking at is um, student um, uh, workforce readiness for college and for um, at the K through 12 level and also for um, the, the college level. And so with that, we're looking at how can we bring our products and services to uh, help affect that. So one of the things that we've looked at is um, certainly with the um, 200 and, and 2007, the ACT tested high school graduates were not prepared to take a credit-bearing entry-level college algebra course. And we're seeing deficits in basic skills um, across the industry. And 20% of graduating seniors at four-year colleges and 30% of two-year colleges struggle with basics such as balancing a checkbook and figuring out a tip or even um, get, getting change at Starbucks. I, I don't know about you, but I've run into that a lot. Um, so we're looking at these things and saying, what can we do to bring um, products and services to market? So the trends are, we realize that for students going to school, for uh, schools going to students, that we really need um, new learning styles require new educational technologies. You know, 10 years ago, who'd have thought that by 10, 10 years further that to over 2,000 of the U.S. education students that were taking, that would be taking courses online. And we knew that the tools there were going to allow, we knew that learn, early learning management tools were going to help make the faculty a little bit more productive and it was a way to be able to put information online. But little, little did we think there would be such great adoption for blended and online learning. One of the other things that we're um, doing is creating rich curriculum and, and courses that will help address these learning styles. I will be your guide for the next 16 weeks as we navigate the incredibly intricate yet admittedly imperfect system we call this court is adjourned. criminal justice. That's uh, good, good detective work, Miss... Forrest, Macy Forrest. Yeah, you guys make a great team. If only I could talk Macy into fighting crime for a living. A tremendous loss to the criminal justice system. Oh, I see where this is going. My plan to enter the corporate world. Listen, Macy, uh, it isn't good. Michael, we need to go. The bullet did a lot of damage. <laughs> What I bring, Mr. Phillips, is a lack of fear. I'm not afraid of anyone. I heard someone I know is now working for the DA. Jesus, we're all screwed. Tonight, more trouble for Mayor Moretti and the Parker Heights Police Department. This is an ongoing investigation. For those of you without a television, the victim is George Palmer. This is Palmer. Philanthropist George Palmer. George Palmer. We're talking about George Palmer. We have allocated all departmental resources to this. Clarence, I'm deadly serious. Look, we both know that this is a bunch of trumped up nonsense. Get me out of this place. I don't care what kind of evidence they fabricate. Marty, are you starting to see where this is going? What did you take, Gary? Do this murderer back in the hole. We're going to have to start making sense soon. What you've just seen is a program that we are develop, We have developed called Criminal, Criminal Justice Interactive. And what this is is a full-blown um, curriculum for criminal justice um, in looking at workforce readiness and looking at um, and working with actually um, different um, states and looking at what are some of the workforce needs. We have identified a couple areas um, around allied health. Um, and also in criminal justice um, seems to be a, a large um, um, request. And so we've created a full-blown curriculum with very rich, very interactive um, types of um, uh, media assets to help deliver and actually one to bring to um, market a, a full-blown course that will help address multimodal learning but really help also um, entice students to go into this field. And so this is just an example of some of the things that we're doing to take um, some of our, our authors in our textbooks and some of the media assets and bring it in a way that is appealing to today's learner. 
Um, and actually, this was kind of looks like one of those um, CSI kind of uh, TV commercials. But these interactive. Is there there, there are several traditional texts that go with that, but we also are creating custom text also um, and custom, um, in fact, that is a very large part of our growing business is custom text or even custom um, um, PDFs, if you will. So it's not just a textbook, it's really, maybe it's PDFs, a series of PDFs. And so part of what we're doing at, at Pearson is, is aggregating and disaggregating a lot of our assets, but also putting together full-blown programs like this. We also have an equivalent one for nursing. Again, another area that we're being asked a lot is how do we um, bring to bear um, some of these assets to create interactive um, visual environments that to help with some of the like the clinical case studies. I mean, that's the clinical studies um, seems to be an area where there's just not enough capacity. So we've created interactive neighborhoods um, that around um, for the nursing program. So, um, but the one of the other big things that we're doing too is. Um, is creating, we have for years um, had something that's called the um, Pearson My Lab series. And um, um, these are really interactive online learning tools that, um, again, in large part were created to supplement the textbook, but we realize that now it, where it's being, the, a lot of the activity in the classroom is taking place with the My Labs, and a large part because it promotes active learning. And so um, some of you may be, does anyone have any familiarity with some of these labs here? Um, but really, it's, it's call, to call them labs is a little bit um, uh, probably not the right descriptor, but it's what they are is online tutorials, interactive online tutorials. They could be self-paced. Again, they can be customized, but it really helps um, the student um, develop at their own pace, but also to help supplement in a tutorial way what the instructor is doing in the classroom. And these are just a few of the ones that we have. Um, math and science, social science, humanities, business and career. And so what you've just, what I just showed you with the, um, the criminal justice program is a whole other level of creating interactive environments to help promote learning in a very um, uh, challenge-based way for constructive type learning and interactive learning. Um, the My Lab usage, uh, over 1,700 schools use the My Math Lab. We've had 1.1 million registered students in 2007. Um, over 5 million homework assignments, quizzes, and tests graded per month. It's, it's quite large. And um, the, the math, um, the benefits of the My, My Labs are that they provide instantaneous personalized feedback. So again, it's kind of getting to how do we have centralized, I mean personalized learning? What, how can we make learning more learning-centric? has unlimited practices. Um, I'm going to share with you some statistics about um, how it has improved test scores and grades. Um, we now have ten, about 10 years of, of, of data around this. Um, and for the educator or for the institution, it helps automatically grade homework, um, greater insight to student performance because now we have assessment and measurements tied to it. Consistency and continuity of course offerings. Why should we have a hundred different sections of you know math 101? Uh, let's have a consistent approach so that we have cons consistent outcome of um, of student um, proficiency. Um, these are fully customizable. Um, I know there's. Um, there's been some press lately about sort of packaged uh, content from, from publishers and um, all of everything we have is fully customizable. You can aggregate it or disaggregate it in any which way that you want. Um, but the most importantly, it, it provides um, better retention and better productivity. Uh, the overall, a better experience for the instructor as well as for the student. Um, some of the proven successes that we have had, um, this was just an example of um, from Odessa College. Um, that what what was it like without using the my math labs and what was it with using my math labs and this is just a, a smattering of the kind of data that we have that shows the the increase in grade attainment and proficiency and so some of the things that we're being asked to as we visit institutions um, we all know there's a nursing shortage and um, and we all know that we need uh, not only nursing we just need we need medical professionals all the way around and in a large part what happens is there's those courses that are those gotcha courses, right, that sort of eliminate a lot of people, whether it's um, anatomy and physiology or it's some sort of or biochemistry. And so what we're doing is we're going in and we're working with the institution and saying, let's help by adding some of these my, math, my labs capabilities to your courses so that we can help you reach um, learners in different ways 
um, so that they can be more proficient and have a better success rate of, grad of completing the class so that they can go on with their desire to become, whether it's a nurse or a doctor or um, whatever profession that they're in. Um, one of the things we did is uh, we collaborated with uh, MIT and we acquired a Master in Physics class. Um, physics is one of those classes where there was maybe a 30% um, uh, graduate uh, completion rate in the class. And by, um, so the, a professor, a Nobel winning prize professor, um, um, developed a master in physics. And so we've teamed and now have actually acquired that asset of mastering physics. And we have mastering chemistry, mastering physics. And again, it's a way to help um, improve learning outcomes, help the faculty member provide rich um, environment for learning and to really um, uh, help students through some of those very difficult programs. The registration growth has been tremendous um, throughout all of our labs over the years. And so when we look at the shifting models of you know going to, so this is a, a, an example of blended learning. You have classroom-led instruction, but you also have online instruction available to the student anytime. So it goes beyond the notion of just providing a capture of the lecture, but here's interactive ways um, that the student can actually help improve their learning. So we've, we've seen a large uptake in that. So one of the things that we're doing at Pearson is looking at how can we take these rich digital media of the MyLabs and then how can we take, this, um, we made an acquisition of, of eCollege about almost two years ago and we have been building a next generation platform, a connected learning platform that will help expand from pure on ground to hybrid to online. And the reason we made the acquisition of eCollege is that they were the leader in online learning for pure online programs, where the, the, the technology that empowers like the, the, a lot of the for-profits, the top 10 of the 12 for-profits, the DeVries, the Waldens, the Kaplans. Um, and so through that experience over the years, we've learned what it really takes to support a full online program faculty support, student support, um, uh, pedagogy support, you know, just all sorts of things to how to create a, a good, uh, a, a rich, robust online program. So we're going to be announcing um, a platform, a connected learning platform that we have been working on for the last couple of years with our, our installed base on how do we open up new learning spaces around with new learning technologies to promote this kind of connected learning environments. We also provide um, something called Course Connect courses, which are courses that we have hundreds and hundreds of courses that are customizable. Um, they can be for fully online and for hybrid, which enhance the learning experiences much. And um, so again, it's it's creating a a, a digital um, asset library, if you will, for the faculty to be able to go in a toolkit to either take some of the courses as we have them, customize them, or to go from a toolbox of digital assets. I was going to show you the nursing neighborhood program, but I think one of the things I'll talk about a little bit is um, e-books, since that seems to be um, a timely topic. Um, certainly, we um, we quite I don't think we've really re reached the uh, the tipping point for e-books quite yet. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, several of the uh, publishers came together, Pearson being one of them, and created a a a, a, a buying um, a consortium, if you will, for e-books called Course Smart. And um, it's just now kind of getting out. Um, but we're starting to see an uptake in, in e-books, um, and perhaps now with devices like, like the, the Kindle, um, uh, it might become more popular and um, to be able to use e-books in classrooms. But um, e-books also can be customized. Um, so we're starting to see, um, also in K-12, we're starting to see, and certainly with the economic pressures that we have today, is that um, we see the demand from students and from parents to, to, um, to have more affordable textbooks and to have, be able to use textbooks in the way that they want to use them. So what does a, an e-book offer? If you're not familiar, is, anybody, is everybody here familiar with e-books? So e-books offer, um, basically, they're in, in a, a pedagogical enhancement offered in a digital verse of a text, animation, self-test, movies, clips, and simulations. Um, new e-books allow for highlighting, note-taking, contextual questions, um, and push out to faculty members. It guarantees for faculty that all students have the content, no sharing, no old additions, no fraudulent sources of information, uh, and it provides a, a price alternative. E-books really are 50% of the cost of a textbook, and certainly that is a benefit to students um, in today's economic times. 
but it is threatening to a traditional marketplace out there. Would you mind a question or two? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Please, no, let's so take I questions. I want to invite some questions because it's always been a fairly popular topic this last day or so. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe and I can just kick off and then invite people to, to chime in uh, on this question. So as a very large publisher of a lot of different kind of content, where you look at your different revenue models, mm -hmm. Uh, and here you're putting multimedia interactive course, uh, pre-course work together, but it looks like Hollywood. Uh, you're committing to, to, or you know, at least it seems that you're seeing that the market's going to go towards e-readers, reducing costs by as much as 50%. Uh, talk a little bit about kind of you know what that's really doing to the, the marketplace of the textbook world in general. Uh, where you know where do you find the resources to invest for those very large uh, sociology 101 kinds of courses where you're paying professors, the best of them, you know, seven figures, mm -hmm. to actually write those, those, mm -hmm. those puppies. So it seems to me that, that whole model seems to be in flux, or maybe I'm misreading what's going on. No, it absolutely is in flux. And quite frankly, um, we are, um, these are business, new business models that we are um, trying to um, help create on the fly, if you will, um, in large part. Um, when you think about the publishing industry, it's been a lot of heavy investment up front, yeah. you know, years to create a textbook, right? And so what we're finding is institutions are saying, gee, we really like the criminal justice program, or, you know what, we need to get up next quarter a master's in autism because we have such a high demand um, and what we don't have the resources to do that. So in a large part, we are still keeping with that student pays model so that we are doing the upfront work. We are helping you create these um, in as much as you want our help or we are just delivering the, the, the assets um, and helping provide the, the pedagogy, the pedagogical and um, instructional design um, or we're completing, like I said, delivering full-blown um, um, curriculum um, and helping customize it to the institution. Um, and again, it's we really are taking a bit of a textbook model in that um, we will help cover a lot of that upfront cost and it really is then a stu per student fee. So that's one way of doing it. There are many different ways of doing it, but we are looking at different models um, to help institutions afford this. So, just sort of follow up on mm -hmm. that, so you're looking really to you're still relying on the purchase of the books as your your bottom line revenue. Not our, our not necessarily. But that's still obviously very important. It is an important component. In a large part, it's because um, what we're hearing from students is that they really don't want the textbook to go away. Um, or, and, and whether, you know, that adoption of the e-book, um, what we're seeing, and we've actually done a lot of studies about this, is we're seeing the students with the textbook, with their laptop, or with the textbook and with, you know, some sort of a, a reader device, and, and we'll see um, the, oh, the Kindle. The actual they still write. And so we're seeing that, yeah, yes. No, what I meant was, what's, what's the e-book, actually, the, the revenue that you get from selling portions of the book or the books as an e-book. Yes, that is still a large part of our business model. Um, we're seeing that um, th there. Actually, we're seeing several different models, but that is definitely one: is, is tying it to the textbook, tying it to the ebook, um, tying it to actually a, a combination of assets that have been bundled together. Like I said, it could be PDFs, it could be videos, it could be you know um, simulations, it could be tied to um, so gaming. But you're having to go into this online environment to develop this other kind of thing. Correct. Carry it because it's not going to get carried. Correct. Just before carrying it, thanks. So um, you, you obviously have been focused historically on the print content, and now you move into the more digital content. Is there is it part of the Pearson business model to move, as we, we talked about it in the group session earlier, into the community driven content? Is there a way that Pearson can play? Is that more the realm of the LMS, the blackboards of the world? Or does Pearson try to be the convener of the collaborative community around areas of content? Actually, um, you've read one of my slides. Um, yes. Um, we really see ourselves as a, an educational integrator, um, working collaboratively with um, and providing a learning environment that um, allows the faculty and the student to help co-create content that is supplemental um, or additive um, to the assets that we bring to bear 
to help within the, the, the course of the curriculum. Um, we're seeing um, a, a lot of a, a, a I would say a, a consumer model there also where students are saying, I will go out and purchase these additional um, pieces to help supplement my own personalized learning. Um, we're seeing whether it's coming from professionals in, in the field, we're also seeing the need for combining some of the, um, the workforce type issues in creating certifications and, um, and coming together to create certifications around a particular need. Um, in the market and so with that um, we're see trying to provide that environment that allows um, collaboration with the technology and with the content and bringing additional services so it's an integrator model very much as so, you described uh, Terry, Terry, hold on because mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. you can walk with that for lunch yeah. i work in the Cattle Smith library actually uh, i guess some feedback here yes uh, and i'm the fact is use more ebooks so I just recently got a request from one of the chemistry faculty to ask for a ebook so we can use it as a textbook for the classes. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of expensive. I'm surprised, you know, one book they are going to use to put it on like for kind of online reference books. It's like a, a book like this size, so mm -hmm. $1,400. So it's not, not all students can afford to buy it actually. Right. But if a uh, university can buy it, you know, the students yeah, we're, that's one of the business models we're seeing is, um, for instance, um, like this, um, we just, um, uh, today the gentleman was saying, you know, how do you do things differently? Well, you go create your own new med school, right? Well, Louisiana created a whole new learning community and technical community college system, and in that, what they're doing is they're charging one fee to the student to take online courses, and within that single fee, um, they get full online courses, they, and, and it has a mobile learning component to it, and it has an e-book tied to it. So for what might have been the cost of a textbook, a $120 textbook, you're getting a full online course, you're getting e-book, and you're getting mobile technology tied with it, and all the, the other digital assets that the faculty member chose to put within that particular program. And so that's platform there, that's technology, the platform is all bundled to that cost also. So we're really trying to find bundled ways to provide um, new learning spaces within blend, blended and online learning. Did I answer your question? Okay. One, uh, one more question, uh, if there is. To uh, yeah. bring us home with the... Uh, I will. Um, so, and this is one of the things I was talking about. So what we're really looking at is, as we're making acquisitions, um, our acquisition, steps, acquisition st strategy is not to buy more LMSs, but is to buy, to look at, partner, buy, or build um, learning technologies, engaging content, and then providing it with services. And this is, a, this is really important, because when I talked about professional development, it's huge. I mean, we're, we're all moving um, from an area of, of teaching to how do you teach in a way that's maybe interdisciplinary with all kinds of assets. And so how can we help with professional development? Um, we are also um, providing services around certifications. How, how we can we help you with certifications? How can we help you train your, your faculty? or, or um, How can we support you from a technology platform? Um, we have cloud computing platforms, um, delivering world-class computing applications, you know, so that it all sits in the cloud for you. You don't have to own the, the hardware or the, the technology anymore. And, and one of the things that's important about this is as information becomes a lot more rich, and it's going to create larger storage and larger, um, which are increased cost to the institution. So we have a, a SAS computing um, capability there, and I'll uh, we'll bore you the statistics, but um, <laughs> the reliability is very important, and this is this is a large part of it. So I will bring you home here. Um, the, oh, uh, that, this is important to men. And through all this, one of the things I said in the beginning is, is demonstrable student success and, and teaching efficacy. And so with that, we've created a whole um, academics analytic suite around assessment, um, whether it's all the way down to the test, individual student, you know, the course, the curriculum, the institution. So we have invested a lot in that. And we're making acquisitions to help with being a leader in the area of assessment. It's a lot different than when I started being a professor and mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, 
sales, the textbook sales guy would come to the office and say, we have a textbook that we'd like you to consider adopting for your course next fall. Obviously, what you've described, Dan, is an ecosystem that is evolving and emerging um, and trying to also make sense of the business opportunities and challenges Absolutely. for moving from one kind of a model into another. Please join me in thanking Anne Keane.